An undefeated preseason record may not mean a lot to the large majority of teams, but it does mean something when you haven't made the playoffs in 15 plus years. The Sacramento Kings have the longest playoff drought in basketball by over a decade, but this year they look much improved and it could be their year to break that streak. Four exhibition games saw rookie Davion Mitchell live up to the hype, Terrence Davis lead the team in scoring, and six Sacktown players who averaged at least 10 points. Stay tuned to see what needs to happen for the Kings to legitimately have a chance at reaching the postseason. Right before that, according to YouTube's analytics, only 28.7% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you're not in that percentage, please subscribe. We're really close to 50k, so it'd be greatly appreciated. We'll get to how the number 9 pick in this year's draft performed in the preseason, along with a breakdown on Tyrese Halliburton, De'Aaron Fox, and everything about this current Kings roster. But the last time the Kings were in the playoffs, Paige Stoljakovic and Ron Artest were on their team. Obviously, from culture to basketball, the world's a completely different place since that time. Had a Bad Day by Daniel Powder was at the top of the charts, Borat had just been released, and the Miami Heat won their franchise's first NBA title. You could say Heat fans never had a bad day that year. Come on, man! I mean, come on, man! Come on, man! You're making money! Come on! In 0506, led by 21 points per game from Mike Bibby, the lockdown D from Ron Artest, and three point marksmen like Kevin Martin, Brad Miller, and Stoljakovic, the Kings secured the final playoff spot in the West. As the number eight seed, that roster didn't know it in the moment, but they had just achieved something that wouldn't be done in Sacktown for another decade and a half. From the Tyreek Evans era to the Boogie era, Sacktown failed to regain legitimacy twice leading us to the era the Kings are currently in to this day. Led by De'Aaron Fox, at least the Kings have had one of the league's most exciting players since 2017, but this era hasn't breeded any more success than the previous time periods. Since 2012, Fox has been one of Sacramento's only successful lottery picks. I'd label Halliburton as a success up to this point, and coming up you'll see why Davion has a great chance at living up to the hype. But since 2012, lottery picks like Thomas Robinson, Ben McElmore, Nick Stauskas, and most recently 2018's number two pick Marvin Bagley haven't panned out to say the least. Those four players were at least top eight picks, so imagine what the Kings roster would look like right now if they just would have made the right picks. If you want to see a separate video where I'd redraft Sacramento's past decade, let me know in the comments. It's safe to say the Kings' biggest problem is the team's front office not surrounding De'Aaron Fox and previous franchise players with the right pieces. Once the front office strikes gold with a talent like Cousins, Tyreek Evans, or Fox, it seems like they get complacent and, for whatever reason, feel that star player needs internal competition as opposed to players that complement their skill set. For example, after already having Cousins, the team took another big man in Thomas Robinson, one spot ahead of Damian Lillard. When McElmore was trying to develop, they took another two-guard in Nick Stauskas. Marvin Bagley III isn't a finished product quite yet, so I think it's a tad early to call him a bust. It looks bad, though, that Marvin was taken ahead of Luka, Trey, Sexton, Bridges, and Shea. However, he was actually the right selection at the time. The Kings already had a high-volume guard in Fox, who needed a screen setter and board getter. Sadly, Marvin's been extremely injury-prone, and his first three seasons saw him post an average 14 points per game three times. Bagley needs to be a big-time threat up front on both ends of the floor for Sacktown, and at times, he can play like an all-star caliber big. Doing that consistently, could make the Kings a winning ball club. It would change everything. We'll see if Bagley can stay healthy and productive over 82 games. Now for the most intriguing parts about the 2021-22 Kings. After bottom feeding and being the joke of the league for a long time, this year's squad has a different type of vibe. The modern NBA revolves around two types of players. One, fast, explosive, high IQ guards on both ends of the floor and two, versatile big men who can handle the rock, dunk on you, and in some cases, stretch it out with a three-point shot. 
The Kings have at least one of those things, as Fox, Halliburton, and now the product of Baylor, who won a national championship, joins the list of intriguing guards for Sacramento. Coach Luke Walton compared Davion Mitchell's defense to Ron Artest, which is the ultimate compliment if you've ever seen Artest lock up the perimeter. Meta World Peace played three seasons for Sacramento, the four-time All-Defensive Player and 2003-2004 Defensive Player of the Year had a reputation as one of the more physical players in the league. And Walton's got a point because Davion's defensive pressure in the preseason was a big reason for the Kings going 4-0. I just try to pick the ball up, pressure them, and speed them up, Mitchell said. You see throughout the course of the game, they were sped up a little bit. That's kind of been our calling card. Davion's a great bit of extra support for Buddy Heald and De'Aaron Fox. When the rookie finds a rhythm, he can light it up from deep range, as he made six triples in Rip City. Based off his college resume and what he's shown so far, I'm predicting this kid's going to improve the Kings' overall attack this year. His strength, confidence, and poise give Davion the look of a veteran player. That's probably because spending four years in college at two different schools and winning an NCAA title give him more playing experience than just any other rookie. Mitchell was the 2021 Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year as well. In addition to Davion having a stellar season, look for the number 12 pick from 2020's draft, Tyrese Halliburton, to build off an amazing first pro season. Halliburton averaged 13-5 and five, along with 1.3 steals per game, shooting 40% from three-point range. That helped the 21-year-old earn all-rookie first-team honors next to Ant, Melo, Sadiq Bey, and Jay Sean Tate. We just want to win, Halliburton said. We've got a lot of guys that have similar mindsets, a lot of guys that have different stories and things like that, but we just want to win. The West has been like this forever. There's the teams in your head, however many there are, that are clear-cut playoff teams, and then anybody else that can make it after that. Every game matters in the NBA, but especially in the Western Conference. I think we understand that and the sense of urgency from the top down is there. Guys get the big picture. Halliburton's development is something I'll keep close tabs on this year. The guard Halliburton's playing next to in the backcourt is the best player in the game who's never been named an all-star. Also, the fastest player in the NBA, De'Aaron can blow past anyone in the open court or in pick and roll sets. He developed a three-point shot last year, but he needs to work on how he manages the pace of the game. You can tell he's willing to be a leader, which is crucial for a top player, but as quick as he is, the man just needs to slow down sometimes and take it easy. He's got the most talent next to him he's had in his career so far, so if he can be the under-control quarterback that Luke Walton needs, the Kings become a dangerous squad. The Kings have a flurry of underrated players who they've acquired via trade or free agency since 2019. They traded Zach Randolph and Justin Jackson in exchange for Harrison Barnes, who's been an efficient 3 and D player for Sacktown. The former NBA champion Barnes provides valuable leadership and pretty good production. Then there's the preseason star in TD2, Terrence Davis II, who just led the Kings in scoring. That only took averaging 15.3 points per game, as with Davis, Barnes, Fox, Heald, Bagley, and Mitchell, the Kings had at least six players who put up at least 11 points per night. That just shows you the depth of this team. Terrence Davis was acquired by the Kings in March via a trade with the Raptors in exchange for a second round pick in this year's draft. In July of 2019, the Kings signed Rashawn Holmes to a two-year $10 million deal. I talked more about him in my Secret Weapons video, go watch that after this. Then there were the two acquisitions the Kings made in 2021, trading for Tristan Thompson in a three-team deal, and trading Chris Silva and Nemanja Bialica in exchange for Mo Harkless. I've always liked Mo's ability to space the floor, but Tristan Thompson's offensive rebounding is a quality that any team would take on their roster. TT should really help out Buddy and De'Aaron and get them extra possessions like they've never seen before. But will Sacktown make the playoffs? The Wild Wild West gives even well above 500 teams a tough route to the postseason. But if Mitchell's even 70% as valuable as he was at Baylor, and Halliburton makes star progression and can provide something consistently next to Fox, then the Kings are pretty solid. 
Sacramento is expected to run a lot of three guard sets this season with De'Aaron, Tyrese, and Davion getting significant minutes together. Those three young guards have been pushing each other through training camp and the preseason. Running lineups with all three of those guys is going to really help the Kings' defensive versatility. It'll be damn tough, and I'm not predicting they're going to make it quite yet, but I could see the Kings fighting for one of the final eight seeds out west if they stay healthy. But let me know your thoughts on Sacktown squad this year. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.